Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD Bodybuilder, back with another video. Today we're back with our second installment in Dr. Swole's Muscle Group Training Guides. And today I'll be giving you a full guide to back training. I'm really excited to be bringing you this series because I think it's going to add a lot of value to your programming. Today we'll be talking about how to optimize your back hypertrophy using science. Now briefly, when we talk about the upper back, we're referring to four main muscles. The lats, teres major, rhomboids, and traps. Today we're going to be focusing on the lats and the teres major. Quick outline for today, we're going to start off by talking about the anatomy of the lats and teres major. And once we understand the anatomy, this will help us to guide our exercise selection in putting together our program. After that, we'll talk about the other variables like volume, frequency, intensity, and rep ranges. We will be getting to the other muscle groups and other videos, so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. Let's get into it. Okay, let's start off by talking about the anatomy of the lats and teres major. Here's a little diagram that I just drew. This straight line represents your spine. This is your pelvis or your hip bone. And then up here, we've got your scapula or your shoulder blade. And this is your humerus or your arm bone. The lat or latissimus dorsi muscle originates from a few spots. It comes off of part of your thoracic and lumbar spine, part of your lower back fascia, which is just connective tissue, and your iliac crest which is the top of your hip bone. There are also parts of it that attach at the lower end of your scapula, as well as some of your lower ribs, which are not shown here. Then the lat wraps around and attaches at your proximal humerus. The teres major is this little helper muscle up top that attaches at the lower end of your scapula and then also attaches on the humerus. Now looking at the anatomy here tells us about the function of these muscles. And the main functions are to extend the arm, which means to bring the arm down like this, and to add up the arms, which means to bring the arms down to the middle. You can see here that we achieve extension of the arm through rowing movements like this, and we get adduction when we do vertical pulling movements like this. If you just focus on my upper arm here, you'll see that it's coming down to the midline. Now, just by looking at the angle of the fibers, we'll note that the upper fibers of the lats are more involved with shoulder extension, which means bringing the arms back like this, whereas the lower fibers are more involved with shoulder adduction. All right, so now that we understand the training anatomy, let's apply that knowledge to talk about exercise selection for the back. The main focus here is that you wanna emphasize compound, horizontal, and vertical pulling movements. These movements will effectively get your shoulder extension as well as your shoulder adduction. In terms of how much of each to put into your program, I typically recommend going about half-half horizontal and vertical pulling. However, the horizontal pulls also get you a bit more in terms of rhomboid, trap, and rear delt activation. So if you're going to prioritize one, I would probably go with the horizontal pulls. Now to dive into exercise execution, I'd recommend that you try to have some scapular protraction and retraction with your horizontal pulling movements. This will help to target your rhomboids and traps as well. Another common question I get is grip width on lat pull downs and chin ups. I typically recommend going with a moderate grip width or whatever makes you feel the strongest. I want to emphasize that the back is a very complex group of muscles and to train it effectively, you'll want to mix up your movement patterns, grip widths, and grip angles. So just because someone tells you that a certain type of grip is better, and even if you do like one grip better, that doesn't mean that you should totally exclude all other types of movements in your programs. Now the next common question will be the angle of your grip. So supinated versus neutral versus pronated grip. A couple quick notes. Shoulder extension is usually strongest when the arms are in a neutral grip, and shoulder adduction is usually strongest when your arms are externally rotated. So that means you'll want to have some rowing movements when your arms are in neutral, and some pull down movements where your arms are externally rotated. In terms of grip angle, a supinated grip will get you a little bit more biceps activation. So if you're short on time, I actually do recommend including a supinated pull down or chin up type movement. A pronated grip will reduce the activation of the biceps and emphasize your lats a little bit more. So if you've already maxed out your direct bicep work, then focusing a little bit more on a pronated grip might be helpful. Okay, here are a few more tips on exercise selection for the lats and teres major for people who are more advanced. Chest supported rows are really useful for intermediate plus. The idea behind a chest supported row is that you take your lower back out of the equation. This has two benefits. First of all, it decreases your overall fatigue from the movement since really heavy axially loaded movements like heavy barbell rows can cause a lot of fatigue, especially if you're moving a lot of weight. The other thing is there is some research saying that people get a bit better lat activation when their lower back is out of the equation. I personally think that this can largely be avoided by just improving your technique. I think your basic free weight rowing movements are going to be better for overall back development just because you're gonna get your erector spining. But for people who are intermediate to advanced and they're running into fatigue issues, 
you'll probably want to start including some chest supported rows. Now in terms of isolation work, which refers to single joint movements like straight arm pull downs, I recommend really only including these if you want to use them for activation. Some people will have difficulty activating their lats and using an isolation movement like this can be helpful in your warm up to get you primed and ready. And then for late intermediate to advanced athletes, you'll want to start using more isolation work just to reduce your overall fatigue. For everyone else, I'd recommend focusing on your basic compound pulling movements, since this is just going to activate more muscle mass. However, if you have lots of time in the gym, like six days a week or more, then it could be helpful. Okay, let's talk about volume or the number of sets you do per week for your lats and teres major. For these muscles, I'd recommend training with high volumes. The back is underdeveloped for a lot of gym athletes. Part of this is because of poor exercise execution, but the other part is not enough volume. Remember that the back is a complex set of muscles and it's gonna take more volume than other muscle groups to achieve optimal hypertrophy. The exact number of sets will vary depending on the person, but start low and add in as you're able to recover and try and find that sweet spot. But for most people, your lats should have some of the highest training volumes out of all of your muscle groups. Now, in terms of frequency for the lats, I recommend training about two to four times per week. One thing when designing your split is that you don't want to have your back day come right after a leg day. This is because some of your free weight compound back exercises like barbell rows use overlapping muscle groups of your posterior chain in things like squats and deadlifts, which might happen on leg day. Okay, lastly, let's touch on rep ranges for the lats and teres major. The lats are pretty intermediate in terms of their fiber type, so I'd recommend using a balanced rep scheme for these, aiming for the majority of your work to fall in the six to 12 rep range. You'll really wanna include a broad range of rep ranges for your back. In terms of a few examples of how I like to program, you'll see in my programs that I like to use the six to 10 rep range for your main heavy free weight compound movement. So this will typically be a barbell or dumbbell row, or weighted chin-ups or pull-ups. Basically your heaviest movement of the day. After that, I'll typically like to use the six to 10 and the eight to 12 rep range for all of your other rows, cable and machine rows, as well as lat pull-downs. Lastly, I'll use the higher rep ranges like 10 to 15 and 12 to 20 for your machine type work and isolation work. Remember that rep ranges are very individual and will also vary depending on the exercise you choose. So you'll have to experiment for yourself to find out the optimal rep ranges for each exercise. That's all for now guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like the video and leave me a comment below. In particular, what are your favorite back exercises? Let me know. If you want to take your knowledge game to the next level, check out my affiliate link for Mass in the description below. Mass or Monthly Applications in Strength Sport is an expert research review that summarizes all the best and latest literature every month. If you're looking to optimize your nutrition for muscle growth, Check out this playlist that has all my nutrition videos going over optimal macros and calories for hypertrophy. To see more of my videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.